G'day friends, I'm gonna walk you through a really nice scalable Arduino project workflow. So we're gonna be using an external text editor and we're doing a little bit of GitHub stuff to keep things super maintainable, super scalable. I'm just opening a new blank sketch at the moment and I'll paste in a little, a little something something. This is just, you know, LED pin, output, digital write high. This is just a, a turn LED on script. Uh, so this is a nice place to start. I'll just save this in the regular Arduino directory. But first I'm going to put it in a subfolder. More on that later. This is, this is an important step I feel. So I'll just save it as my project. And we're done. Next, go to preferences and we're going to use an external editor. Super important to check this box. Uh, if you don't do this, you can break things by using an external editor. But now you can see everything's grayed out. And if I, if I start typing things, we, we can't enter text in this field. For now, Arduino is only good for compiling, uploading, doing the serial monitor, that kind of thing. We're not actually going to edit the project here anymore. I'm going to open up an external editor. Today I'll be using Atom. You can get that at atom.io. But you know, like Sublime Text, Notepad++, like whatever you like. I'm just going to use Atom today because I because uh, it, it integrates nicely. So I'll open up Atom with a new window, and we'll open our project. Uh, so we can go to Open Folder. This is a great way to like open a full project. And in my Arduino directory in Documents, I'm going to open the whole top level project folder. Not this uh not this uh subfolder that actually contains the Arduino code, but this top one. This, that's what we're going to work from. We don't have any markdown. Okay, so what do we have? We've got the project folder and inside that is the Arduino project with the code. So that's pretty standard. Now, the reason we're going to do it from here is for a few reasons. I mean, in, in an external text editor, you just get so many more tools. Like in Atom, you can control, you can control click to place multiple cursors. So you can like make multiple edits at the same time. That's really useful if you have a, uh, a few bits of repeated code, but I mean, you're already here. I'm sure I don't need to convince you to use an external text editor. It's just much better than the workflow in Arduino. Now to set this up with say a library, setting up libraries in Arduino is still super easy for writing your own libraries. And for now, I, I kind of like to keep them in a separate directory. So I'm going to, I'm going to shift a to make a new folder. You can also just right click new folder. I'm going to call it SRC. That's pretty, pretty common. So in my source directory, in my source uh, directory, I'm going to create my library. I'll just call it blink.h and I'll also make blink.c, uh, cpp for C++. Okay, so there's those two empty files and I have them up here. What I'll do is just split the pane to the right. So now I can, now I can see both my .h and my .ppp file at the same time. And I'm going to, I'm going to create a little, I'm going to create a little function. Uh, I'm going to create a function called blink and it'll take in an int pin. And all it's going to do is pin high uh, delay and then blink off real simple. But this is just to show you how to set things up so that they're nice and scalable. I'll also need to include uh, the header, the header file. And that should be that. So in the header, what do we need? Uh, your classic if not defined blink under H, then hash define blink under H, just the preprocessor stuff and the hash and if. And in here, what do we need? We need to hash include, uh, I think we need to include Arduino, yeah. Arduino.h. And then we can also give the, the function prototype. Okay, so we've just created a library. We've created a header file and we've created a C++ file that actually has the, the function that we want to use. That means that in our project, we should, if I've got this all right, be able to hash include, uh, it's in the source folder, blink.h. 
So we can include our library. And now I believe we should be able to blink LED pin. So if all goes well, this should compile. So we open up Arduino to do the compiling and the uploading. And I'm compiling for the Teensy 4 today. That's just a, a third party board. It looks like that's succeeded because a, another little program has opened up. So no worries. We've got, what do we have? We've got our main project and we have our source file. Within the source file, we have a brand new, super fresh directory. Oh, you know what? That was all a bit remiss of me. I didn't actually save. So here's here's the gotcha. You'll see this, this little blue dot here. This means that this isn't yet saved. So I need to save the file, of course. And now in Arduino, this should be updated. So let's try that again. Maybe I was a bit quick on the trigger. That's just the one gotcha with this kind of stuff. You make sure, have to make sure all your files are saved, but there you have it. Still works anyhow, because we got it right the first time. How unusual is that? So just to recap, what do we have? We've got the project and we've got a source folder that contains our library that we just wrote. And of course, you know, this, this can now take on all the functions that you want to write for your project. No problem. So where to from here? Well, uh, let's, Let's get this on GitHub. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but first let's talk about, before we do that, we'll, um, you know, we'll document our project. So maybe, maybe we want a folder for project images. Whoops. And I put it in the subfolder. So I'll pull that out into the main and yeah, maybe we, maybe we've got a screenshot, like, you know, here's a, here's just some board. But if we, uh, if we drop that into, I'll have to open the nice thing about Adam is you can right click and show an explorer. So here's my, my project directory and I'll just drag this, uh, this image straight into the images folder. So there we have it. We can see that reflected in Atom. And you know, maybe with, maybe we, uh, we also want another folder for data sheets. That's no problem. I'll, um, I'll grab my data sheet from here, copy that go to my project and paste that into data sheets. So now our project directory, we have data sheets, we've got some images and we've actually got the code. So our whole project is wrapped up in this nice little project uh, file structure. So let's, let's get this thing on GitHub. Uh, great thing about Atom was it was originally made by the people at GitHub. So it's got great Git integration. In fact, if I, Open up the Git pane here. Ooh, can I initialize a repository? No, I have to go to the top level. Hmm, that's a bit odd. Okay, well, uh, usually maybe I maybe I'm forgetting something, but usually there's an option to create a repository here. So let's do this the hard way. Didn't that just pull the rug out from me? I'm going to go to my project and. I'm going to open Git GUI here. So I've already installed Git on this machine. Uh, if you, if you haven't just Google how to install that, but I'm going to, I'm going to open the Git bash here rather. I'm just going to Git init. Cool. So now back within Atom, we've got a new report, a new uh, directory has appeared with all our Git files. And if I open this now, oh, you know what? It may just be my workflow. I'm going to close this real quick and open it again. Where are we? My project. Hey, that's better. Okay. So, uh, if I open up the Git pane, I can see all the unstaged changes that I have and we're not currently on a branch cause I haven't committed anything yet. So, uh, let's, let's make a commit. I'll just stage all my files initial commit and create a detached commit. That's cool. So now the branch is updated to the master branch. We're now committing to the master branch and there's no remote. So if we click on the GitHub tab, uh, this repository has no remotes, but we can just publish. I'm already logged in with my GitHub account. You'll just probably see a login page here, but once you log in, smash that publish on GitHub, 
There's my account, there's my project, and I think I can just hit publish. Maybe if you had uh, maybe perhaps closed Atom and reopened it, something, something, you would have been able to initialize the repo from within Atom. That's, that's usually what happens. I'm not quite sure what's happened there. But there we go. We've just uh, created a commit and published it. So if I go to my GitHub and go to my repositories, I should have, there it is, my project right at the top. And within it, we've got my code, my images, my data sheets. Looking a little bit anemic on the, uh, the readme front though. So in the top level, I'm going to A for a new file and create a readme dot MD for markdown. I can close all my other stuff. Don't need all that. Don't need that. And what's in a good readme? We got the title of the project. We got some description. Maybe we want to put that in, I don't know, probably want to put that in italics. That'd be nice. So we can style that with some markdown. And perhaps we want to include an image. So, I mean, we included an image in the images folder. So with markdown, we can include a link to images render. And the sweet thing about Adam is uh, if you control shift M, you can render the page. So you can get a, a nice preview. So there we have our title, we got a description, we got an image, maybe we've got, uh, you know, some, maybe we want to include a pinout diagram, maybe we want to include some features, and we can include a list of, hmm, feature, awesome. We can save that readme, we can go to our git pane once again, Stage the readme with add readme as our git uh, as our commit message, commit and push. And once that's done pushing, we have on GitHub a nicely nourished Arduino project. Once I refresh that page, there you go. We've got our full repo with our code, datasheet, images all your documentation, all in one place. And you've got a nice little uh, introductory page so you can tell people how to use it, how to commission it, what settings they might need to change, the works. Otherwise, for uploading to Arduino, it's all the same. Tools, select your board, smash the upload button, what have you. But there you have it. I hope that, uh, I hope you feel inspired now to create well-documented projects and get away from this like very effective, but ultimately quite basic IDE. Now you can, now you can do some really, really cool things with your, uh, your external text editors, really powerful tools for editing text, even just having split panes. Oh man, so useful. Just having, you know, your, uh, your, your two, uh, maybe you've got your .h file and your .cpp file and you can just refer back between them or maybe you've got your your library and your your main script uh, open at the same time so you can, you know, you can just copy that function call or you can just see what the parameters are between your functions. Even just having the split pane makes it so worth it. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. I hope you found that helpful. Let me know if there's anything I can improve on. Best of luck.